Welcome back, everyone. Uh, we are introducing Dr. Michael Bruce to the brain warrior community. All brain warriors know sleep is essential if you want to be armed, prepared, and aware to win the fight of your life for the health of your brain. Sleep Forever has been one of the major pillars of brain health. And we're bringing you one of the world's experts uh, who's not only knowledgeable, but he's fun and funny and practical. And one of the tools he has that a whole bunch of people have taken is Chrono Quiz. And so while we were talking, I took it and I'm a bear. So Michael, can you talk about the different types of sleepers and yes. what that means to people? Absolutely. So, so the Chrono Quiz actually taps into your genetic sleep schedule. Now you may not have heard of a chronotype before, but you probably actually heard of the concept. If anybody's ever called you an early bird or a night owl, those are chronotypes. Back in the 70s, the research was done there and they discovered there's early people, there's late people. Then about 10 years later, they're like, well, I think there's also somebody in the middle. We're gonna call them hummingbirds, all right? So you had early <laughs> birds, you had hummingbirds, and you had night owls for a while. My contribution to the literature was I actually added a fourth chronotype, uh, which is an insomniac. And so there's a genetic form of insomnia that has a lot to do with your circadian rhythms. And so I added that as a fourth category. Now, what was I going to call it? How was it going to work within everything? Well, you know, that's not the easiest thing to figure out. So I was writing a book about it and um, the power of when, and we were all sitting around the table on the marketing side, trying to figure out what do we call each one of these types of people? And I decided I wanted to use animals that actually had the same chronotype that we were talking about. To be clear, we discovered very early on that nobody wants to be a porcupine. I'm just saying nobody wanted to be a porcupine. So we chose lions were the early birds. Um, and it turns out that lions kill before dawn. So that made a lot of sense. Um, bears, which is what you are actually the best, uh, bears have a medium sleep drive. They're, they're, they're super knowledgeable. They get a lot of stuff done and they're extroverts. They have a tendency to work with people more. Turns out we've had almost 2 million people take the quiz and we have some early bears who have a tendency to want to get up early, like our lions who like to get up at like 5.45 in the morning. And then we've got some later bears who would rather get up at like 7, 7.30, 8 o'clock, things like that. Then we move into our night owls and I renamed them the wolves. Uh, I am a wolf uh, by trade. I have been a night owl my entire life. Um, both my wife and I are night owls. And it was kind of funny because when we were dating, um, I would say, you know, when do you want me to pick you up? And she's like, oh, I don't know, eight, 8.30. And then we'd get to dinner and we'd have dinner from nine to 10. And then maybe we'd go to a movie and our date wouldn't end until two o'clock in the morning. And we were both completely fine with that because we were both night owls. It can be a little wonky uh, if you're married to a night owl and you happen to be an early bird. Um, and then we came up with dolphin as the one to represent the insomniacs. Um, and we did that because, yes, I know, um, because <laughs> um, <laughs> I picked you off very early in the conversation as a dolphin. Don't worry. Um, it is I that, never thought of myself as an insomniac. Oh well, it, what... It, <laughs> I, we can, we can talk about it later, take the test. Uh, right? But yeah, take the test. I'm pretty sure you're a dolphin. Um, but, but what we know I do. about, I'm a dolphin. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, so, but what's fascinating about dolphins, the reason I chose dolphins, by the way, as an animal is they sleep uni hemispherically. So half of their brain is asleep while the other half um, is awake and looking for predators. Busy, and I was like, right. right, the busy brain, right? And that's really what I'm trying to get at is we've got a lot of people out there with busy, busy brains. Um, and that sometimes can prevent them from sleeping. It can cause excess anxiety, uh, obsessive compulsive disorder, things of that nature. And so those were the four categories that we were able to figure out. And then once somebody falls into that category, it gets really interesting because I can actually, with very high degree of reliability, be able to predict the best time of day for you to have sex, eat a cheeseburger, ask your boss for a raise, wow. talk to your children. It's unbelievable because once you start tracking somebody's hormones and you know what the and you can predict and know what that schedule looks like, you know exactly when cortisol is going to be high, when adrenaline is going to be high, serotonin, dopamine. And then you can tell people, hey, this is the time to do that activity. That's so, so interesting. interesting. So chronoquiz.com bear hanging out with the dolphin, um, <laughs> I think is really interesting. When we first 
dated um, I had season tickets to the Lakers. Oh, it drove and me so crazy. I could stay up to Laker them. Nation, go Lakers, way to go, guys. So I like to get up at like four or five, or at least I used to. I've sort of adjusted because of him. Go to bed early, get up early. He would stay up till midnight. I almost like broke up with him because of it. I'm like, I can't do this. This is just right. So if your chronotypes don't match, what do you do? And you could have relationship issues. Yeah. Uh, which I find so interesting. But in this episode, I want to talk about nightmares yep. and dreams. Mm -hmm. And I read one study where nightmares went up during the pandemic. So talk to us, why do people have nightmares? And, you know, obviously as a psychiatrist, I treat a lot of people who have PTSD and nightmares, uh, the only effective treatment, well, two that I use is I actually have them write down the nightmares mm -hmm. and then I give them a different ending. I said, yeah. you have to like, think of yourself as a creator, your brain created, the trouble, um, right. the horror movie, and let's give it a different ending before you go to sleep. And I found that to be very helpful for some of my patients. And then so there's, there's actually a nightmare treatment by Dr. Barry Krakow at the University of New Mexico, and it actually follows that guideline. Um, it does a couple of other things on top of that, um, which is very interesting. But what we do is we have them write out their entire nightmare in exquisite detail, every single thing they can think about. And then they change the ending at the end which is exactly what you were recommending. The other difference though, is that we ask them to read that three or four times right before bed. Oh, interesting. So we, so we start to get that narrative going with the new ending. Within three to five days, the, the dream actually changes. Wow. And he studied that and published on that? Exactly. It's been published. He's a, it's a well-known uh, treatment for nightmares in particular, um, which, which in and of itself is quite interesting. And, you know, when you talk about nightmares and you're wondering, we're talking about COVID, um, one of the things that's really fascinating is because people are no longer waking up at their normal wake-up time, they're extending their sleep schedule. Many people don't know this, but the last third of the night is mostly made up of REM sleep which is where 80% of the time you're going to be dreaming. Mm. So one of the easiest ways to stop having quarren dreams, right? Yeah. Is because well, that's what they're calling them. Yeah, now. All the kids in our house have been saying they're having these weird, wacky, vivid dreams. Exactly. So number one, that's a stress reaction. But number two, they're oversleeping. They're getting more REM sleep. So they have more opportunity to have those dreams. If they just woke up at their normal bet wake up time, the dreams would almost stop because there's no more place for them to go. Uh, okay. That's what right. about, um, are you, I'm sure you are familiar with Prazosin and its mm -hmm. impact yeah. on, on PTSD and nightmares. Yeah, absolutely. So Prazosin is a really interesting medication. It was used in PTSD um, and it has, has actually found to be quite effective um, for many of those people in terms of their uh, nightmare frequency being to decrease. I will also tell you that there have been um, not formal studies, um, but cannabis um, is something that um, I have found with many of my veterans has been extremely helpful for, t for PTSD nightmares in particular. Um, and I'll tell you why is because one of the effects of cannabis is has a tendency to start to lower REM sleep which means it will lower the amount of timing when those people would, would might be having some of those nightmares. And it was really interesting on my podcast, um, Sleep Success, I actually interviewed a dream therapist and I was very skeptical, okay? Cause I'm like, come on, what's going on here? Like, you know, when you have a dream and you're swimming in water, it doesn't mean that you hate your mother or something stupid like that. And she was like, I'm not a dream interpreter. I'm a dream therapist. And I was like, Okay, now I'm interested. So what she does is she has her clients write down their dreams and then she brings those dreams in session and she uses the content of the dreams to help further their emotional process. Mm. It's fascinating. So for people who have traumatic dreams, right, who've been through traumas and things like that, what she'll do is she'll make sure, number one, that they're safe about talking about that particular issue because there are a lot of traumas that you, you really have to be very, very safe before you can really start to let that information out. So she creates set and setting, right? And then she says, okay, I want you to, in your mind, close your eyes and bring up the scene of the dream and, sh and tell me about what's going on. Tell me about what you see in the surroundings. Tell me about who you are in the dream, what you're feeling in the dream, things of that nature, right? And then she turns to her clients and she says, push play. And I was like, what? And she was like, 
Your brain doesn't remember dreams. It, ha it doesn't hit record when it's dreaming. It's playing. And the nightmares, by definition, are dreams that awaken you. Guess what? The player just stopped. Your dream is on pause. Your nightmare is on pause, which is why you continue to have it and it wakes you up. But if you push play in a safe environment, you push through the emotional baggage of it, working with a therapist, and guess what? You stop having the nightmares. It was one of the most fascinating conversations, honestly, I've ever had. Um, and she's a Jungian trained psychoanalyst, like real degrees, really gets it, understands it. And I'm really interested. I'm, I'm considering actually doing some training with her so that I can actually, you know, use this with some of my clients. Interesting. Well, I mean, Freud talked about dreams as the royal road to the unconscious. Yep. I often say that dreams contain three things generally. And if you can understand those, that you are really can be helpful. So a wish or a fear, and nightmares obviously are fears. Right. Um, a current event that triggers it. Right. And something from the past. Usually. And so if you can get those three things, it can really help inform. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, you wonder if, why people have nightmares. Do you have, as a sleep doctor, have yeah. you, you know, why do we dream? Why do we have nightmares? So, so there's a couple of different theories about their dream theory, right? So one theory of dreams is that it helps us emotionally process things that we, we may or may not be able to do during the day, either because our brains are just too full of other stuff going on, like driving our car and working and things like that, or we're just, we are avoidant of these because they're so emotionally, you know, hot, if you will. Um, and so a lot of this, we think, comes out in the dream and allows our brain to start processing it when it's not having to do all these other things. Um, we also know that during REM sleep is when we move information from our short-term memory to our long-term memory. And so that process of memorializing and, and defining the data that you want to stay plugged into your brain um, has some sort of weird, fantastical vision in your head. And so that process of kind of basically finding a filing cabinet with the right file drawer with the right file to deposit that information is how your brain interprets dreaming. Um, and so that process is sort of very odd and fantastical. And, and to be fair, it doesn't always work that well. Like if you have, so as an example, if you had a dream where you walk downstairs and your dog is eating a bowl of spaghetti with your second grade teacher and you don't know why, right? The likelihood is you had Italian for dinner, right? Your dog jumped on your bed um, and your second grader was talking about school, which reminded you of your past, which was your second grade teacher. And so all of that information, for whatever reason you wanted to keep it, kind of got com combobulated and landed in maybe not the best spot. Um, and so that's really what we think dreaming is, is this movement of data into a more formalized area. Um, and again, this is how our brain has a tendency to interpret it. Also, there's emotional processing that goes on as well. So dreams really do seem to be multifactorial in terms of their function. Wow, so interesting. I'm not like all these things, we could probably do a whole podcast just on dreams. Oh, like yeah. what do certain things mean when you can't run and then you fly or people talk about getting their feet stuck in mud or they talk so, about- So that's actually a very paid. well known, that, believe it or not, that's very well known. And so what's interesting about that, when people say they feel like they're running through the sand or in quicksand, that's actually them dreaming in REM sleep and interpreting the fact that their body is paralyzed during REM. Oh, interesting. Right, so that way you don't act out your dreams, right? Because otherwise you would actually act out your dream. If you didn't have this paralytic mechanism during REM sleep, you'd be all over the place. You'd probably get hurt. There'd be all kinds of problems. And believe it or not, there's actually a sleep disorder called REM behavior disorder. And REM behavior disorder is where this paralytic mechanism doesn't work. Oh. I, had a, I had a patient almost kill his wife, literally almost kill his wife in the middle of a dream um, because he had REM behavior disorder. Also, oh, interestingly, 35% um, of people with REM behavior disorder, it's a precursor for Parkinson's syndrome. So there's a lot of interest there oh, in wow. trying to understand kind of par the Parkinsonian sleep um, uh, relationship. And then also, uh, Daniel, you were talking about early on, early on in our conversations, you were talking about the glymphatic system and how our brain cleans out that waste removal system. That has to happen just before REM sleep because that way all the data that we don't want goes away, also along with proteins like tau and things like that so we can avoid things like Alzheimer's and all that good stuff. And then what's left is what goes on into REM sleep and then becomes more permanent. Interesting.
That's so fascinating. So important. All right. Um, <laughs> when we come back, we are going to answer some of your questions on best supplements for sleep, sleep routine, suggestions for a restless mind. So stay with us. We're with Dr. Michael Bruce. Go to thesleepdoctor.com or chronoquiz.com and you'll learn if you're a dolphin or a bear. Um, oh, you know, I want to say one thing before we go off to the next one. Um, I read the book, Why We Sleep, which huh? I was Walker. awesome. And he said, we actually discriminate in our society against night owls. And, yeah. and I've never thought about that. Oh yeah, dude. Uh, we have three children here and one of them is a lark. Um, Two of them are larks. Mm -hmm. And the other one is a night owl. And you just see, if you're not like up and at it at eight right. o'clock, I know it's going to be harder for you to perform at work or in school when society really has developed to support larks. And, right. and what's a lark in your Lion. system? A lion. a lion. So if you're a lion, you get a lot of societal praise. Oh, yeah. But if you're a wolf like me, a wolf or a dolphin, then. Well, no, I'm up early. So. Yeah. Yeah. You're, I'm all, up all night. you're always up. <laughs> I'm up all night. Yeah. So, number one, we're going to fix you. Don't worry. Um, but, you know, when we, but you're right. And, and I, I can personally attest to that um, because I was told throughout high school that I was lazy. I, the very first class of the day, I, I slept through almost, almost every day of high school. Um, why? Because I was 18, 17 years old and my circadian rhythms had shifted it as, changes. All, as right. all, all circadian rhythms shift in those Routines. kids yes. to want to stay up later and sleep later. This is one of the reasons why we're pushing for school start times right. to change so I that like they that. can be later. So that way kids can do this. But Daniel, you, you really hit on an interesting point, which is I was told that I was a lazy, good for nothing right. kid. Even wow. though it's biology. Yeah. I mean, I can't count the number of times that my dad might have come into my room and it's like, you're sleeping the day away. What are you doing? And, you know, he didn't understand the biology. I mean, my dad has no medical training whatsoever. He's an insurance salesman, you know? And so he, he was just doing what he had been taught, you know, from his dad and from his mom is, you know, rise and shine. The early bird gets the worm and all of those kind of things. Uh, honestly, some of the most creative people in the world are night owls. I, I, they're wolves. I've had some, I mean, the most creative people that you know of, like we're talking artists, we're talking actors, we're talking musicians. Oh no, we know a lot of them and they're working at, like you'll get an email at three o'clock in the morning. That's and right. I'm like, Why are you up? That's <laughs> right. And, and, and they're up because they're wolves and that's the, that's the creative night owl that's yeah. out there. We don't want to suppress that. Yeah. We want to support that. We want those people to be creative because that's where we get our innovations and that's where we get all our great ideas. So I, I, I feel the pain um, personally, <laughs> um, as well as professionally as well. Yeah. yeah. So many people I think have been shamed when it's nothing but their biology. Yep. So uh, we often say it's easy to call people bad. It's much harder to go. Why? What is going on? And that's where this sort of sleep neuroscience is so important. Uh, yeah. Usleepdoctor.com, chronoquiz.com. Stay with us. We'll answer your questions when we come back. If you're enjoying the Brain Warriors Way podcast, please don't forget to subscribe so you'll always know when there's a new episode. And while you're at it, feel free to give us a review or five-star rating as that helps others find the podcast. If you're considering coming to Amen Clinics or trying some of the brain healthy supplements from BrainMD, you can use the code PODCAST10 to get a 10% discount on a full evaluation at amenclinics.com or a 10% discount on all supplements at brainmdhealth.com. For more information, give us a call at 855 978 1363.